What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Garmoth and welcome back to Blood Bowl 2. Sorry for the late video, but it's finally here, the week one wrap up for the Dead Air Invitational Season 2. As per usual, there's going to be spoilers in this video, so on the screen right now, there are links to the matches that were played this week, so you should go check those out before checking out the rest of this video, if you haven't already. For those of you who are still around, let's go check out what happened in week one. Alright, so let's take a look at the matches that were played in week one. First of all, of course, is the Clone Brigade versus the Jungle Jumbo. Which I have to take time to say every single time. Thanks a lot, Roneth. There's, of course, the human team coached by Lucas, one of our new coaches, or Goat Fort as his uh, internet handle is, uh, against Roneth's Lizardman. Ended up in a spectacular 3 3 game. If you're watching this and you still haven't watched this match for some reason, go and watch that match. That is match of the week by any stretch of the imagination. It is fantastic. Uh, that was absolutely amazing to watch. So entertaining. Uh, very fun game. Next up uh, is the Necro Orcacons versus Olaf, which is, of course, my Orc team. Uh, I went up against Nick's Dark Elf team. Nick is my, our other new coach, or Nemo Nemo. So that was a pretty fun game, uh, a bit tense. No, no one near as high scoring as the first match, but uh, yeah, that, that ended up in a 1 0 to me after a long, long drive. Uh, second up. Sorry, third up, rather, is the Last Action Rats, which is the uh, Skaven team coached by Uniform 764, of course, a returning coach from last season, uh, going up against the Salty Sea Doges, which is Greg's uh, Dwarfs, another returning coach from last season, end up in a 0-1. Uh, that match is also kind of worth watching, in my opinion. It was... <laughs> it was pretty clowny at times. It was very all over the place and had some just crazy dice rolls in there. Um, Skull may not look as impressive as the 3-3, but I'd still recommend people should go and watch this match because it was a little bit silly. The last match of the week was the Full Metal Munchies, which is Pete of Titan Creed's Chaos Team, a returning coach, going up against Skull Push, which is Dan or some kind of wizard, and the final returning coach, a High Elf Team. End up in a 2-1. That one's probably the most standard game, I think, of, the le of this. Yeah, that that's probably the most standard game of the, uh, of the week. Very standard, just 2-1 grind. But... Still, reasonably good game. Some funny stuff happened in all in all these games, I think. But uh, yeah, that three three that should that that's what you want to look out for. <laughs> Fantastic game. Um, so we're going to change up the format a little bit for the week roundups um, in season two. Instead of me looking through the teams by myself, I'm going to do it as part of the schedule uh, for the next week. So we'll get the other coaches in and we'll sort of show off the teams as we're talking about what's going to be happening next week. So instead of jumping to the teams, I will go get the other coaches, and we shall talk about what's happening next week. Alright, I'm back, and I'm joined by a selection of the coaches from the league. We have uh, Titans Creed, aka Pete. Hello. We have Roneth. Yay. We have Madden, or Uniform764. Hello. And we have Gutfor, or Lucas. Hello. And we're going to go over the schedule for the week two. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. We've got some really interesting matchups again. We've got, uh, starting off, it's the Clone Brigade, which of course Lucas is humans against my uh, my Orcs. Could be a fun game. Yeah, that's going <laughs> to... If anything, how the last game went with Lucas, this will be an interesting uh, game no matter what. I'm, I'm so happy that I got on the Puffer Carry this time, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Waxer will die! <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Waxer. Um, Waxer's is the man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, this is like the most generic... Blood Bowl match ever. Yeah, humans versus ox. It is yeah, the, the it, classic. It, it is the classic. Yeah, yeah it is the. the uh, and I, li I like that. I like what that. Are, what do they call it in like fucking El Clasico? Yeah, it's El Clasico. There we go. Um, second match of the week is the Last Action Rats, which of course Madden Skaven going up against the Jungle Jumbo, which is the Lizardmen, uh, coached by Roneth. Third match of the week is Full Metal Munchies, which is Pete's Chaos going up against Oloth, which is um, the Dark Ghost. Co yeah, coached by Nick. And then final match of the week is Skull Push, which of course Dan's High Elves going up against the Salty Sea Doges, which is of course Greg's uh, Dwarfs, or Dwarfs as we call them. So, I mean, going out of order, Greg has basically to do what he did last week again. <laughs> High Elves versus... The luckiest roll of all time. Calm the salt, Madden, you're not even in a game anymore. <laughs> he is up against another really fast team, however, it's, it, it's still Dwarves. Still pretty. Uh, and Dan, ha Dan has shown Dan. that he knows what to do because he did it against me. 
he's done throw. He well, it's not that it's not so much that he knows what to do. It's that he knows that he can throw, so he will just try and throw. Whether the throw at that moment in time is a good idea is irrelevant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's a be it's a better thing to do with high elves, however, in comparison to the chaos. So yeah. at least he's playing a team that more leads towards his uh, let's have strategy? A question mark. Yeah. So let's just focus on this match to start with. So, I mean, what's the team value difference right now? Uh, so, Salty Sea Dojas are on 1030, and the High Elves are on 1000. So, Dan gets 30k Paddy Cash, which is pretty Ooh. relevant, because he... Yeah. Uh, he has money on hand. He could buy a Bloodweiser if he wanted to, but he would have to put in 20k of his own. Um, um, no. Didn't get any level-ups. <laughs> I'd rather save for an Apothecary if I was him. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> He would be getting uh, uh, 30 extra. Oh, yeah, yeah. Never mind. That's... Yeah, he still needs to drop 20k. Uh, so, the, the, the good advantage, so I guess the sort of advantage in inverted commas is Greg got 10 SPP, but it's all on one guy who now has guard. So... Ah, oh, he's got guard. Yeah. So, it's like, basically, if you can ignore, if you can avoid that one guy, which Hiles can do because they're fast, then Greg is basically a... He, he is a basic dwarf team. There's no... Well, I mean, I don't think guard, like, sure, guard is going to be good for Greg, but I don't think guard is really going to play a huge difference in the mm. matchup. I mean, I, mm, agree. I don't agree because uh, it's even though they're dwarfs and they have skills, they're still strength three, and so are the high elves. The high elves are also strength three. There's yeah, no strength like, differential, which make, means guard is actually very good because it. Oh makes, yeah, it's very good, but I like with one guy, I don't think that there's going to be that much of a difference. I don't know. I think one, like, I think that. You know, can I just point out that my high, my Wood Elf last season, the one guy who got God, he was really annoying a lot of the time. That is true, but, uh, like, it, yeah, it but I would say that would be more key for you playing Wood Elves. Yeah, I'm not say Where, like, <laughs> you're going to pick two or three key fights to make, and your guard guy there being huge. Yes, Whereas but. the way around, having one guard guy on a team where basically you want everyone brawling is less important. Yes, but I think you guys look at it the wrong way. You're looking at, like, oh, the dwarves don't need... Go like, the guard is irrelevant for the dwarves. I kind of agree against the high elves. I'm looking at it in terms of Dan trying to block people. The guard is going to... Th is going to oh, yeah, in terms it. of Dan, but against high elves, that guard yeah. should be a relatively weak pick. It should, should be the it No, it's, the it's Dan. Dan's going to try and punch the dwarves. It's going yeah, to happen. Definitely. But, like... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was irrelevant. I'm just going. I'm just saying that the that guard is going to be less important in a matchup against the high elves than it would be, let's say, against the chaos. I just feel the way Dan plays. I don't. I I feel like guard is going to screw but, him over. Uh, I think the ta like most like obviously the blocks is really good, but the tackles is is uh, not bad either. In terms of scoreline, I could see this ending one one. Yeah. Mostly because of speed. I can see a very I, I beat just up hope. Team. I mean, I'm gonna go, and I hope it's a one nil to Dan because I hope Dan just schools Greg. That would be fun. I I, I would like Dan to 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 beat Greg. That would be kind of funny. Oh, uh, like that. Yeah. But I mean, I terms of score, like I don't know. I guess it could go high. Like I could see, like I just I struggle, especially like watching. Watching Greg play against Madden, like he dealt with your drive, but it took him a while, and then obviously his drive took him the entire length of time as well and also like there was an element of RNG in there as well so I just um, the thing I, I struggle to much is like I'm very aware I screwed up my drive I should have been more aggressive with my gutter runners which like at least twice I should have moved gutter runners forward when I had space because then he would have had to blitz them yeah so that's one thing that like Dan will play that aggression that I didn't probably because it's Dan yeah and but... also I would say Greg's drive wasn't that good. No, no, that's what that's what my point was going to be. I was going to say I, I don't it, see I mean, Greg scoring. Like, it, yeah, it took him all the time, but that's the way dwarves are anyway. Like it, actually, his caging and driving was quite poor. That's what it, that's what my point is. I don't see Greg scoring more than once. No matter what the end score of this this match is, I feel like Greg's going to get one touchdown. And whether that one touchdown wins in the game because it's like a one nil, or whether Dan can get in some stuff, that'll be the deciding factor. I think. I think Greg will score in his drive. It'll just probably be maybe a bit sloppy and take the entire the entire um, drive to do it. Yeah. No, I don't. Well, I'm fifty fifty. It depends how hard Dan plays. Dan. <laughs> well, I mean, he is Dan. Just because, like, I'm basing this purely off like the last game where he played dwarves. Like, 
very easily, if one or two rolls had gone differently, that ball would have been the other end of the pitch and he had no comeback. That's true. Uh, so that's, I think that's the elves versus dwarves. Uh, so let's just go upwards. Let's just go from the bottom upwards. So, sure. Chaos versus Oloth, which is a little bit similar. Obviously, Chaos are nowhere near as slow as dwarves, though. They're that not slow, but they don't have enough thing. skills. They don't have tackle, they don't have block. Yeah, but they have horn. All I need, to, all, horn. I, all I need is Nick to do what Dan did and get a fucking touch back on the ball. I give it to the I give it to the cow, and the cow goes and puts it in the end zone again. In terms of uh, in terms of uh, team value difference, we're looking at uh, ten fifty on the chaos team and uh, nine hundred on Nick's uh, high elves. Uh, Dark elves, sorry. So that's Nick actually, is missing a blitzer. Yeah, Nick is down a blitzer, and um, I don't think he leveled up. I'm not missing no. anybody, and I haven't got any level ups. So I've just got a nice spread of SPP. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wait, does Nick Nick has to have some SPP? There it is. Yeah. The, the oh, one line. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to. I was like, he he got an MVP. Where is it? I couldn't see yeah, it. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the main issue, like, you're gonna run it. <laughs> Pete, Nick could get a wizard. <laughs> Oh my god! No, you are fucking kidding me. Not no, I'm no, no, I'm, I'm not kidding you. He's he's what he's 150 team value down. That's wizard. No, money. he won't. He won't get a wizard because you remember he'll get a. He'll um, get a lineman. Yeah. He'll get a free lineman. Oh, of course, yeah. That money. Wait, how oh, shit, that's true. How he has five. Money. No, he has five k. He has 50 k in the bank. He could get a wizard. <laughs> Don't give him ideas. I won't. But yeah, you, well, either either way, you're playing against probably a like a bloodwiser or something. Yeah, but he doesn't have an apothecary either, so he should probably spend that money. That's true, he'll probably, he'll probably spend the 50k on an apothecary I've already, bought, I've already bought my apothecary. So that boosts his three base. <laughs> so yeah, maybe he won't actually get any yeah. t because it's tough to tell. Like, he'll, still, will... he'll still have at least 100k, which means he's probably going to take a free No, 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 because if he buys an apothecary before the match, that's 50k inflated value on his team that we're not seeing. So it'll be 950, and then the journeyman will go up to like probably 1,000 or just over 1,000. So yeah, I'm very think... tidy amount. So actually, I don't think Nick will have any inducements. No. It's going to be like 40. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, as, as, as a Chaos player this last season, uh, going up against a fast team, like, it's kind of painful because you usually want something like strip ball to get rid to get the ball from, like, for example, someone who has dodge. Didn't he say he was saving up for an assassin? Though he's not going to forego that sh uh, an apothecary for an assassin. Well, he's, he wants to get one as quickly as possible. I know that yeah. much, but I don't think he. I think he should probably get a. He's probably slowly realizing that it's probably not the best idea. Like he needs. Well. So I mean, he's playing. He's going to be playing. He's going to be playing with two blitzers and a witch elf, and then all the rest are linemen. One of which will be journeyman. So. Um, depends on his inducements. He might be able to get a merc line. Uh, merc no, because like. Well, I'm pretty confident he's going to spend this 50k on an apothecary, which means, like I said, his team value is going to go to 950, and then journeyman value on top means, like, inducements, he's going to get, like, 20k, 30k. Yeah, maybe. So, I mean, if he doesn't buy the apothecary, then yeah, we're in an entirely different ballgame. Yeah, he could use inducement money to buy a wandering apothecary. They're 100k, though. Are they? Yeah. I thought they were 150. I'm pretty... <laughs> I think they're 100. What's that? A wandering they apoc. Are, they are 100. Yeah, they're 100. Yep. I mean... He has to get a lot more inducement money or I mean, petty cash to actually get that for free. I mean, this whole game is very low low actual skills on the players. Um, obviously, your Beastman all have Horn. Your Chaos Warriors don't have anything, and your Minotaur has, you know, typical um, big guy stats. And then he, on the reverse side, all of Nick's linemen have nothing. He has two blocks on his two blitzers, and then his Witch Elf has a jump up... Uh, Frenzy and dodge, yeah, dodge. Yeah, dodge. yeah but I think Horn will be very important this match because if he breaks through, you should have some guys behind so they can just charge or blitz. Let's yeah, try. rather. I, I didn't actually. Uh, I actually forgot that only the witch elf has dodge. Yep. So getting the ball is probably like the most difficult to get the ball from are the blitzers and the witch elves, and with with horns. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yeah, you can get a two dice on any of his pieces because they're all strength three. Beastmen are just incredibly good with that. Yeah. So. I'm curious to see if he can get some. Uh, this is like longer term, but I'm curious to see if he can get some levels up on that witch elf. Because in my experience, levels witch elves are the most terrifying thing. In witch the elves are really strong. Like they yeah. are crazy strong. I, I personally like having played against Nick last week. I thought he played well. Um, I think 
Pete plays well as well, based on my experience playing him last season. And I think this is actually going to be a really good game. I just think it's going to be really close. This is the game I'm most excited about. I say excited about. It's the one I think will be closest and will come down to someone making a great play or a mistake. Whereas every other game, I think, will have some RNG. Either someone making a crazy play or someone being damned unlucky. I think this is the closest game in terms of predictably it's going to be close. How are you feeling, Pete? Fine. <laughs> Good, so, confidence, we like it. That poker face. <laughs> How do you feel? I wouldn't say it's poker face, it's it's elves. I've just come off a match fighting out more elves. I, I don't, I don't think, I just, I'm just trying not to shit talk Nemo too much as he's not here. Yeah, that's reasonable. Alright, so I mean, that's pretty, it's pretty much the same, it's, it's par for the course for you at the moment. You played elves last uh, week, you're playing elves again. The teams aren't quite the same, but they're similar, so... Well, yeah, he's a blitzer down. So the strength, the the game is in my favour. It's my yeah. game to technically. Te technically, lose. The, the game is leading towards you. Okay, uh, so next match, of course, is Skaven versus Lizardman. Uh, terms of, sp it's it's weird. This one could go. Um, these these are the two. Uh, we are two teams who uh, are missing some players. Yeah. Uh, Madden, I actually didn't realize this like before. He's down I, two people. Yeah. Like, I was like no, I devastated when I when I saw that I uh, that I was going to miss a Soros. However, he is actually missing a gutter runner and a lineman. If I'm not, yeah, gutter runner and lineman. Yeah, the, the gutter runner is like huge. Like that's that's massive. <laughs> like you missing a gutter runner. So like, there's only, there's only two I'm, gutter I'm, runners. I'm, so I'm, have I'm to worry feeling about. like we're we're more on the equal amount of level uh, than. Um, well, I always feel like Skaven have it rough against Lizards because um, yeah. they can't outpace Lizards anywhere near as well as they can outpace anyone else. And with the Gutterers having strength too, uh, Skinks can actually get a one. Like, skink, two Skinks can two dice, say, a Gutterer. That is runner. definitely true. So, like, yeah. the Lizards have the catch ability, basically. Mm. I would say it's key that he's down a Saurus. I'm not Absolutely. too worried about being down the Gutter Runner because he will get some. Inflated team value because he'll get a replacement skink, won't he? Yeah, get a skink. So you have five so skinks. So between my petty cash and also the fact I've got 50k in the bank, I could probably afford a merc got a runner, which I may do. But you'll get two journeymen though. Yeah, like, you, you can't look at these team values exactly because they're both going to be inflated yeah, yeah, by like journeymen I values. I don't know my how two, much. My uh, two journeymen will take me to not about 960. His will take him to about 980. That's 20,000. That's not a lot. Unless you have, like, your own cash. Yeah, yeah that's what I was saying. Like, I'm, I may spend some of my own cash to get a Merc or something to get an advantage in this game. I don't think you'll have enough money to have a Merc. I'll have, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find out when we get there, but I'll have 70 or 80k. Yeah, but a gutter run. Is that enough for a Merc gutter run? I actually don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it is. I, I think you can only, like, get a lineman for that. And you're already getting a dirty Mm. So you might as well just it's not hard to say because we're not super experienced about inducements, so it's kind That's of a true. bit of like, guessing. It's a bit weird. I mean, in terms of the actual thing, uh, I could quite easily see this being a semi repeat of Ronis' last game, just be not be because of the plays will be as crazy, but just because both teams have the potential to be that fast off the line, just grab the ball and go. Like, and it, yeah, possibly. And if that slips, and if that slips through, like it could quite easily just you know. Two touchdowns per team per half, kind of thing. <laughs> the match I have is he's up plus one stunty player and still has no apothecary. Yeah. Like, so this is one of the few games where, like, assuming I'm careful with positioning, because, you know, Saurus, once they're somewhere, are stuck in that fight, I can probably bully him a bit as long as I tie up the Saurus with linemen and they're expendable. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. It, it'll come down to specific armor breaks for sure. I feel like armor breaks have the potential to swing this game more yeah, than totally. others. Yeah, definitely. That's what swung my game. With yeah. <laughs> I, it, it's almost like well, it, it it's it's why uh, the description of Lizardman is like every <laughs> player is important. No player is expendable, expendable, and that's sort of true because all of your dudes are specialized in one thing or a couple of things. And if you lose those, you lose a lot of ground in that area. For example, Sara's, you lose all of your brute strength. Um, Stuff five, uh, though, I think. Yeah, yeah, like, like I'm not saying that it's like, 
losing one won't lose me, you know, the league or anything like that. But like losing one of each, like you have less that are good at only these things. Yeah. <laughs> In comparison to like orc or human teams who have like more rounded stats that can like perform different things. It's true. I actually think you. I, I think this is the least worst match you could be down a Saurus for, though. Be yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, and I'm just very be happy. Just because um, the skinks can... Because you're going to get a skink, which means... And just because the gutter runners are more likely to carry the ball, skinks can actually tackle gutter runners. Yeah. Like, so... It skinks are pretty fast as well. In fact, the entire they're team is actually runners. quite fast. So You only have one skink that can keep up with a gutter runner. That is true, but, like, the other skinks are still moving Yeah, eight. no, absolutely. So, as long as I position myself reasonably... Hopefully I'll skink. get a level up or two off this match, because I have a relatively... going to be honest, like, expert. can you use that as a segue into, our, into the, my match versus the humans? That's basically my hope for the this match. I just want to level some people up. I don't mm. really care that much how the game goes score-wise. Yes, you do. You liar. <laughs> I would say it's less important... Well, obviously I want to win, gosh. but... Obviously, I also want to win. But I mean, I don't care <laughs> as much because I'm playing orcs and I'm a bit slow. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. I'm. I would. I would. If I lost this match by like not obviously a landslide, but if I lost this match but came out with like two or three level ups, I'd probably consider that a success. If that makes sense. Yeah, I also. I, want I, I totally see that <laughs> because uh, uh, playing orcs is usually a pretty like slow experience like they usually build up like over a, over a league very slowly but when they get there they get really scary yeah. pretty much the same with humans like they they like build up I mean, a bit slowly they you know some people do some crazy shit and then they get SPP and suddenly certain players become insanely good yeah because they have such well-rounded stats and skills Obviously, the main difference here is um, Lucas has a leveled up player who has jump up. Um, I don't have any level ups, uh, but I did get an apothecary, so it means we're 10k difference. So petty cash is completely irrelevant in this match because we're not down any people either. So it's just going to be 10k petty cash, which means I could put my 20k in and have 30k petty cash and yeah. not be able to buy anything. Uh, he has yeah. a big guy, you have three medium guys. Yeah, I'll probably just ignore the yoga. <laughs> okay. It's, it's the best way to deal with an ogre's orcs, I find. Or lock him up with blitzers. No, you lock. No, if you're gonna. No, if you're gonna lock up an ogre, you lock him up with a black orc, not a blitzer. Well, yeah. But like. I would actually like, lock rather up. lock up an orc with blitzers because they have block. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like. Yeah, but yeah. I'd ra I'd rather be using my, my blitz. I I. Yeah, blitzers I see are so important. Blitzers are so important because they they have agi three and movement six that you can't. I don't feel you can afford yeah. to have one locked up by an ogre. Probably. <laughs> Time to make ogre cherry balls. <laughs> oh, if you do that, obviously I'm not going to ignore him. I'm going to punch him. <laughs> I'm going to mob him. Uh, so I mean, in terms of level up, I'm close. Like if Dumbwitch Aura gets uh, MVP, he will level up. Um, I have a lineman on 5 out of 6, which really sucks. Um, if Prophet Rylai scores, he'll level up. Yeah, I want the lineman to level up so I can get kick. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But I won't... I would probably not give Waxer kick, because I don't He's know. He's fucking to. Waxer. <laughs> he is damn a... Waxer. Mighty blow. <laughs> He's Sigma you incarnate. You have to give him, like, block or mighty blow, because people will try to kill him. Yeah. He is like, a living god. I mean, if not people... I will try to kill <laughs> I mean, you don't play Lucas again unless you meet him in playoffs. That's true, yeah. but I want... Okay, then. I want Let's see each other in playoff. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm, nice. I'm going to be honest with you in the outset. If Barbarian falls over, he's getting fouled by a goblin. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I like the strategy of you having that goblin just to foul. It's that's his job. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like hope it. we got sent off. <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah, this is. I'm not happy about this matchup though. <laughs> you not? Nope. I feel it's pretty even overall. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But the, the thing is, when I was uh, like training for the league, doing that stuff, the only guy I lost to was playing orc. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I think that's a sign for bad things to come. It has. I, I feel like this match also can be potentially decided by armor breaking. Yeah. Specific armor course. breaks would like cripple our teams. Yeah. So uh, again, it's it's down to the dice as per usual. Uh, I think we're pretty even though. I could see this going. I could see this being like going something like a one-one or a two-one though. Yeah. Scoreline wise. But well, last time we made that prediction, it went three-three. <laughs> that game was. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh... That game was something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll be honest, I would take a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. That is true. I'd rather take a 4-3, but... <laughs> <laughs> to my side, of course. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah. This week is going to be fun as well. Yeah. I, ho I, I really hope it, like this season just continues being awesome. Because this first, this first week was... My god, it was great. It was pretty good. All right. Uh, any final words for anyone about the matchups? Uh, I would say it's more important for the teams at the bottom than the teams at the top. I guess. <laughs> no, just because going like, if you lose, you go to one one, which is fine. Whereas if any of the teams at the bottom lose, they're down to o two in a seven game series. That's true. Like they're gonna really struggle to make top four at that point. Well, I had a tie, so. Yeah, there's ties though, so it's like, I mean, if we actually look at the at the uh, leaderboard, then like you've got three you've got three teams on one o, uh, you've got two teams with the draw, and then you've got three teams on o one. It's weird. I'm looking at this draw, and Pete's not involved in it. I don't understand. It's... <laughs> what the draws? There's, there was a draw, and Pete wasn't involved. I don't oh, understand. Oh shit! Yeah, man. Pete, <laughs> we, need, we need to draw our match. How about how about how about I win and that'll be it? You can draw with everybody else. Just... How about we both win? I don't to think Ronith understands how Blood Bowl works. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so thank you so much for watching the wrap up, guys. Uh, we'll see you all in the games, I guess. Enjoy the uh, week; it should be a good one. Hopefully. I was going to say, hopefully not too bloody, but no, let's go the other way. I hope well, it's really bloody. People really, dying. Really, really bloody. Yep. Orc blood everywhere. Nope, human blood. Cloned blood. <laughs> Fucking clones. Alright, thanks so much for joining us, guys. We'll catch you in the games. Bye. Bye. Bye.